Russell Tours helps people to hike in the High Alps in Italy, France, Switzerland, Austria, and Spain. We provide self-guided tours throughout Europe. We help to develop the profile and the opportunity for where you can hike and have a special experience, hopefully an experience of a lifetime. This video is to help you understand the trip for the Altavia 1. There are four Altavia trips, and we're going to go through them, each of the one right now, we're going to do AV1. So this is a trip that encompasses uh, about 75 miles. It can be done in nine or 12 days, depending on how much time you wish to stop in places like Cortina, which are lovely, and taking a bus in and out of uh, the Venice airport. You can start very easily, arriving early in the day, get to Cortina, and enjoy the tour in Cortina. So the bus rides about three and a half hours, and there are several different buses to take depending on when you arrive. Some of them go a little bit out of the way, but they'll all get you to Cretina. We provide you, of course, with all that information. The hotel we like to stay at in Cortina is the Boutique Hotel. And the Boutique Hotel is this Boutique uh, Villa Hotel Villa Bleu. Uh, and it's in Cortina. It's a lovely hotel, with full facility. <clears throat> in the morning, you wake up and you can go and uh, to the trailhead by bus, which arrives at a beautiful lake. And uh, Lago de Brez. You can see the path here. There are hotels at the trailhead, although we don't find them quite as interesting. Now this is a 3D mapping system that allows us to decide how we want to view and see the data. And uh, what's nice about it is you get a really good sense of the altitude and change. Of course, we provide you with all of the information that you'll need for that hike. For example, the distance between uh, places and so forth. So you can actually get very good information that you need. We also provide you on the ground trail information. And the first stop is a good hike for the day. And it's about 11 miles. And you go to the Refugio Lavarella. The Refugio Lavarella is a lovely Refugio. It uh, is an older cabin, quite beautiful, but not uh, a fancy place. Many of these Refugios really, frankly, are on the side of the cliff or on a big hill and don't really provide you with tremendous, for example, running water or with uh, uh, private the rooms, often they are, they are only available with dormitory style accommodation. But if you can see the area that you're in with this, you'll get a sense of the trail. I'm going to back up here so you can see the trail as it winds its way across nine days to the other end, to the pass at the end. And so uh, we'll take this Refugio Lavalella, it's about a uh, 10 mile uh, walk to the next trailhead. And uh, the trail, which is uh, taking you between the different refugios. And so you get a sense of the next refugio here, which is the refugio Lavarella. And uh, This is a lovely little refugio sitting out on the edge of a mountainside. And uh, you can see down here, it's part of a ski area. Many of these are used in the winter time as ski areas. You can see the red lines that go up to ski area. And there's actually roads that come in. So you can actually go in and out and down into a village if you wish. Uh, you're up on the edge of a cliff here. You can see this beautiful setting that this refugio is in. 
it's just stunning when you think about the view that that has from the very top. So that's kind of the idea here is to have some fun having tremendous uh, privacy and views. And they sometimes walk in and out to an area. We go a little bit further out uh, than we would otherwise. There's some tremendous points of interest here. Uh, this is, for example, uh, some caves and some views that you could go and see at Punta Berrio Galeres, and it's a historic landmark, and it's right down the hill. So if you want to go down to it, you can hike down to it or take the cable car down and hike back up. It's an example of uh, something fun that's on the way. There's all kinds of opportunities along the way. The next track is uh, takes you about uh, five and a half hours. I'm sorry, five and a half miles, about three and a half hours, four hours, depending on how much time you spend. And it is this next section, which you can see you go down into the valley, go across the valley, and then it takes you to the Refugio Lugazume. I'm sorry, Refugio Nuvalado. And uh, this is a uh, pretty good hike. Beautiful setting. This is more of your Italian style, not quite Swiss anymore. We're getting down south a little bit. Beautiful setting out on the hill. And uh, you can see this beautiful up along the ridge here that you end up at night. A tremendous setting that you have for. Uh, that and then in the morning you're going to backtrack a little bit and come back around So we've taken you specifically to this refugio because we believe it really offers Such a dramatic view. It's about 20 minutes 30 minutes off the other trail. That's the ongoing AV1 and as you go along this trail you'll see different sections that you're able to uh, uh, enjoy the views to Cortina and above and off to the Alps beyond. You can actually see all the way to Zermatt from here. And um, the next section of trail, as you can see all the way to Refugio Sitafume is a beautiful inn on a hillside. And this is an example of what's available on this tour. Right. Don't want to get into all the detail, but each section of the trail we identify how long it takes and the difficulty. Typically, these are four or five hours of hiking a day. They're all moderate to easy. You make sure that it's a place that you can hike to. It's not something that uh, you have to be an Olympic hiker to enjoy. There are more difficult trails if you wish, but they we're trying to find a common ground for people who enjoy the mountains and want to see the scenery and don't want to have a lot of people. Now, you can see here the change and the idea that you're, you're hiking right under this magnificent dolomite. The dolomites are just beautiful, uh, this section of the, of the mountain range, and you're able to see these as you go along uh, the path. You can see in red the ski areas, so there's always an opportunity pretty much anywhere along the way if you wish to uh, uh, see and be a little quicker and not have to uh, uh, spend your time walking. There's often a quick way up that hill and um, the Refugio Koldai is again another one of the uh, modern Italian looking buildings. Uh, lovely place, family owned, and uh, it's a mountain cabin. And if you look at how it's situated, you'll see it's just magnificently situated so that you can get this tremendous view in the morning of the uh, the dolomites here and the full range of the area. So you have this really incredible setting. And you'll notice on the trail sometimes people will go jaggedly off the regular trail and onto other areas. Those are often to see the view and to get the view that they're looking to enjoy. I'm going to move ahead here. We can go in more detail. This map is available to you to look at if you want to call me and set up a time to do that so that we're going to steam ahead and not kind of get in all the detail. But I think I've given you a flavor of what this trip is about and the kind of detail you can expect. You're literally walking under these tremendous 
uh, carved uh, Dolomite Mountains. And you can see this beautiful range. Uh, there's refugios all along the way, some which we can stay at, some we just visit for lunch. And uh, then you hike down in the valley and underneath, again, these incredible Dolomite uh, domed mountains. Uh, and then the trail is really all the way in to uh, the south, about nine days of hiking. It can be longer. There are areas to add to, add to this. Also, you can, uh, if you want, uh, uh, look at alternatives. I've got an overview written into this as well. And, and the reason I've done that is you'll notice that uh, there are some variations in the trail so that you don't have to take that trail. There are literally dozens of opportunities to change the way this looks as you go along these ridges and beautiful views. And some want to go down in the valleys, others don't. There are different refugios based on the number of days you wish to stay and how far you want to hike each day. What we try and do is accommodate you by coming up with a range of uh, values and difference uh, so that when now when you're done with this trip, you end up down on street level and you can take the bus back to Cortina or a bus back to 82 or three or four if you want to do more days. And uh, the idea of the trip is to have fun and to enjoy and to do it at your leisure the way you want to enjoy your great experience. So I hope that I've given you some sense of how this looks and uh, where we are on the map in terms of sort of uh, look and feel. You can see we come in and out of Venice here, and uh, it's a below the range that is typically the Swiss Alps and above, and uh, the Southern Tyrol. Now AB2, 3, and 4 are lined up along either side here to the right and left, but AB1 is really the most uh, uh, beautiful one and the one that most people want to see. So thank you for taking the time to look at this with uh, me. I'm Tori Russell. Russell Tours. I would love to talk to you about uh, coming with us on our trip and enjoying the trip with us. Thank you very much. Goodbye.